Alongside the release of Alder Lake, Intel also launched their high-end C690 chipset, which is currently still the only choice if you're building a Alder Lake-based system. But this is about to change in early 2022 with the introduction of the upcoming H670, H610, and most importantly, the B660 chipset. We have been blessed with some recent leaks about the specs and first price information for BC60 mainboard from MSI. Let's find out what B660 will offer and if new mainstream boards will actually make your next build more affordable. I've talked about C690 in detail before. It's a huge upgrade from the previous C590 mainboards, offering a lot more bandwidth and PCI Express lanes for your connection needs. The question is, how much of these improvements will carry over to the B660 chipset? Well, if the leaked spec sheets from Twitter user MomomoUS is correct, B660 looks like it will offer about half the connectivity of its bigger brother. But most importantly, it will allow the same PCI Express Gen 5 connectivity from the CPU. Let's break it down into the details. As it's not a C-based chipset, it won't support CPU OC, but the more important memory OC is still available. With a B660 mainboard, you will still be able to use the PCI Express connectivity from the CPU itself. That means full 16 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes from the CPU. Another four PCI Express 4.0 lanes for a M.2 SSD are also available. These two connections are the most important when it comes to a standard gaming system, so there's no drawback compared to the bigger C690 chipset. First difference has become apparent when we look at how the chipset is connected to the CPU. While C690 has 8 DMI 4.0 lanes available, this is cut in half to only 4 DMI 4.0 lanes with B660, which means the CPU chipset bandwidth is exactly half. But when you consider that it's still the same bandwidth C590 did offer with its 8 DMI 3.0 lanes, it's still a big step for a mainstream chipset. With half the connection bandwidth, Intel is also cutting the chipset-based PCI Express lanes in half, from 12 Gen 4 and 16 Gen 3 lanes in C690 to 6 Gen 4 and 8 Gen 3 lanes in B660. USB 3 connectivity is also reduced. USB 3 20 GB per second from 4 to 2, 10 GB from 10 to 4 and 5 GB from 10 to 6, while USB 2 connectors are barely touched. SATA is also reduced by half from 8 ports to 4 ports. In the end, B660 allows for a fully fledged out gaming and productivity system. Intel still retains the full 16 PCI Express 5.0 lanes for the GPU. You have a direct M.2 connection from the CPU with 4 PCI Express 4.0 lanes, and you can add an additional full speed PCI Express 4.0 M.2 through the chipset without creating a bottleneck. Yes, there are fewer USB and SATA ports, but who needs more than a 12 combined USB and 3 and 12 USB 2 ports or more than 4 SATA drives in a addition to the two full speed M.2 connections. I think this is more than enough for most of you out there. The only question that is left now is how much will B660 boards cost? Keeping a lot of the connectivity for the mainstream chipset is great, but C690 boards are really expensive. Can B660 offer great specs while keeping the price low? Twitter user Gold Mango timed his leak perfectly because now we are also getting early pricing information on MSI's upcoming B660 lineup. I think you can safely ignore his comments about no DDR4 B660 boards from MSI since there are DDR4 based C690 boards from MSI too, so no chance that they wouldn't offer DDR4 with their B660 mainboards. But aside from this, we can see a much healthier price range, starting at $190 MSRP but still getting pricey at up to $259 for the high higher end Tomahawk board. Currently the cheapest C690 boards can be had for about $160 or $170, which means that out of the 10 B660 boards on the list, 7 have a higher MSRP. Of course there is a difference between MSRP and actual street pricing, but I would have expected more options in the $100 to $150 range. A MSI Pro B660MA for $209 is kinda high in my opinion. Keep in mind that DDR4 versions might be priced a little lower and MSI isn't the cheapest OEM out there. Looking at the leak, I think higher end B660 boards will be even more expensive than entry C690 boards, but there will also be enough entry offers at slightly above $100, which would make a i5-12600K or i5-12400K much more interesting from a price performance ratio. 
after looking at those two leaks, I think B660 might turn out to be the go-to option for gamers building a Alder Lake based system. There's still plenty of PCI Express lanes and connections available for every gaming system out there. PCI Express 5.0 support is retained and at the same time main builds will start a good $50 cheaper, especially when keeping the upcoming non-KI5s like the 12500 or 12400 in mind, it makes so much more sense to pair a sub $200 CPU with a $120 main board than spend $180 or more on a C690 board, especially if you don't use the extra connectivity. Other OEMs might even start with a lower MSRP and street pricing could also turn out to be cheaper. On top of that, Intel does need a well-priced mid-range offering when you consider how good and cheap many of AMD's B550 boards are. Zen 3D might turn out to be really competitive and Intel would be stupid to have competitive CPUs only to lose out when it comes to the price performance ratio of their mainstream motherboards. I'm looking forward to B660 boards and depending on price and quality, there's a good chance for getting my recommendation. I'm interested if the high entry prices of C690 kept you from going for a auto lake system so far. Keep in mind, all of this info is based on leaks, so things can still change. But we won't have to wait for long. 2022 is around the corner, and I'm expecting to see B660 boards around CES in early January. As always, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and see you in the next video.